Welcome back to the Society for Participatory Medicine. This is John Holden with Amy Gleason. I'll just summarize two uh, key points in terms of the society going forward. One is sharing best practices from the patient and uh, having that mechanism in the society, and then also uh, being able to summarize technology. And uh, Amy, I know with CareSync, uh, you've got some news and some exciting things going on there, and as a personal user, uh, I love the technology, but uh, tell me about what the game plan is going forward and, and what CareSync is all about. Right, thank you. Right. So CareSync is an application, a technology application, but it also has a human service on top of that. So we have nurses, health assistants, as we call them, that help patients really navigate the health system, aggregate their health information, reconcile information from different sources, figure out ways to remove obstacles from their care plan. So if they're they're having trouble paying for their medications, we'll try to help them solve that, or they don't understand what they're supposed to do or get conflicting information from two doctors, we'll help them with that or make appointments and that kind of thing. Um, as you were saying, we just had a very exciting announce last week that we closed our Series B fund round, uh, funding round. So we're growing very quickly. We're hiring um, a, a minimum of 500 people probably over the next year time frame. So we're growing very quickly and hiring a lot of nurses to help patients. Wow. 500 people over the next few years, that's uh, phenomenal because as a personal user of uh, CareSync, I have to uh, give a full disclosure. I am a customer and, uh, and love the service and was actually on support last night uh, asking them why are only two physicians out of nine physicians for my brother who I manage his record in Charlotte, North Carolina from up here in upstate New York. Uh, only two physicians submitted a record, so your support group uh, it to me that actually they had gotten the records in from the others just recently and they haven't been uploaded yet. So uh, so having that human component and saving uh, us the hassle and the uh, wherewithal is amazing, fantastic part of the service. So, uh, you know, kudos on that. I haven't seen that uh, from other, uh, other competing offerings. So uh, tell me a little bit about... Uh, your personal story. I know that uh, you have some personal um, experiences in the care system with your family and uh, the society, how that has all played out. Can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I actually started off my career as a nurse and worked in electronic health records for a long time. And 2010, my daughter Morgan was diagnosed with a rare autoimmune disease. And she went from being a gymnast and flipping and twisting all over the place and having a pediatrician to having 12 doctors across six health systems and none of them talked to each other. So um, I would go from visit to visit and I ended up with them that I would carry and take all of her information with me. And so um, I figured out eventually that I could, you know, try to put things in on patient portals and different online things, but I quickly found that was a lot of work and I ended up with this stack of stuff that was sitting next to my computer to be keyed in and entered in. And, I couldn't keep up with it, and I was getting charged a lot of money to get those records. So um, my first record that I got for her was over $400 just to get a copy of it, and we ended up paying a lot of, over the time to get that information. And so that's kind of where CareSync was born. Um, Travis Bond is my partner here, and we started CareSync to try to help the patients, and um, we had both worked in the EMR field before. And so that way it's you know, we can really be on the patient side and kind of center everything around the patient and give them that human help that you really need when you're in that situation where you're, you know, sick, not feeling well. And it's not always clear where to go in the healthcare system. Even when you're someone that came through that system, it's not always to figure out when you should call, who you should call, what should you do next, um, and to even remember what happened from a visit. Exactly. I mean, I have a tough time remembering what I had for breakfast, let alone... <laughs> Remembering what happened with a patient or a physician visit from a year or two ago. The uh, uh, tell me a little bit about on the human side of the service. You had mentioned something in terms of coaching or being able to uh, you know get a game plan or communication forward. How does that work? So as we get the patient's medical records, we um, pull together a summary of that information. So we create a health timeline that goes back in history and helps you have that information to share. But then we also try to work with patients on a care plan. So as each doctor says, do this, do that, I want you to do this, these are our goals. And then we work with the patients also to figure out what the patient goals are, which may or may not be clinical. So the doctor may say, I want your hemoglobin A1C to be X amount. But the patient may say, I just 
it's one of my grandkids or I'm trying to make it long enough to be at my granddaughter's wedding and dance at her wedding or, you know, they may have very different goals. And by getting those known to doctors, we can really impact their care and the decisions for that. That's awesome. And uh, the uh, we, had, we had a conversation offline uh, a few weeks back in terms of uh, the receptivity of physicians sending in records. And uh, I know when my wife went to one of her specialists, uh, they were having a, a recalcitrant fit in terms of sharing records with some company in Florida. And she goes, well, I've signed off the disclosures. I've signed off the consent for my husband. Uh, you know, what more do you want me to, you know, this is, this is what I want to do. So uh, the good news is what uh, the indication is that most physicians are, uh, will go ahead and send the records as long as the, everything consent and authorization is signed, but what, what percent are kind of uh, digging in their heels? It gets less, I think, as we go along. Um, most providers are pretty good about it. Um, about 10% maybe really give us kind of a, a difficult time or maybe a little less than that now, but um, we, we do have to follow up with them regularly. So, you know, we everything in healthcare seems to run on facts. So you have to send these faxes over and um, then they'll say, oh, I didn't receive the fax, and so you have to send it again, and then say, did you get it now? And, um, so it's like a little bit of a game to try to make sure that they got it, that they're you know, saying they uh, acknowledge it, and then they have 30 days under HIPAA to get you the records. And so we have to follow up then to make sure that they're really staying in that time frame, and, and most of them do pretty well around the 30-day mark. Others we have to push a little bit longer. What, uh, you know, fax, as you're mentioning, seems to be the lowest common denominator technology, but, uh, you know, so you use brute force to make it work. What, uh, what's uh, CareSync, in your perspective, on true uh, interoperability? I mean, is that still a unicorn pipe dream that uh, will never come to pass, or, or what? I think it's starting to move a little bit. It's just not as fast as I would like. So I think the kind of motto of CareSync in the beginning was, we're tired of waiting. We've been hearing about interoperability for a really long time. So let's just make it work however we have to make it work. If we have to fax stuff, we'll fax stuff. But we also, of course, support Blue Button and APIs and all of these great new technology and ways of doing things. And we're starting to get more records coming by Blue Button and direct messaging protocol. We're starting to have people say they'll accept them that way. Um, so it is churning. It's just a lot slower than we would like. Yeah, the, uh, the, the direct connect, as you say, you know, the, uh, uh, the rate of change is not what we'd like it to be. But uh, what I like uh, as a user of the system is the indexing as well because a lot of the records that have come in by fax, you then have your team exactly. uh, index it. So they'll pull out uh, medications or pull out blood pressure or other readings and put that in as an actual data element, which is, uh, you know, again, wonderful to have that human component and the team component in terms of being able to not just say, hey, you know, here's a spot to store your records up, you know, go run and be free. You know, having that team and support uh, anytime I've ever uh, logged in uh, to your online support group, they're always right there, whether it's, uh, you know, Saturday night or Sunday morning or uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a work day. So um, it's uh, great to hear that. And what, what, um, what from, from the society's perspective, getting back to the technology and how CareSync plays into that portfolio, uh, what would you like to see uh, or what would be the most advantageous and the useful uh, service for a society member from a, like a technology catalog or, or how, you know, what, what are your general thoughts on that area? Well, I mean, obviously I think everyone should use CareSync. Um, I think, you know, there are a lot of solutions out there that you have to pick and choose what works for you and your situation. So um, CareSync obviously is great for people that need someone to help them. and They're um, really wanting to have a complete picture and be kind of one source of truth. So other people maybe that don't have as much history or it's not quite as much of a need for them to have ongoing help, then maybe there are other systems that can work just as well for them, like that pull there are a lot of systems now that are coming out that pull data from the patient portals. So you log in with your patient portal ID, and then it'll keep them synced. The only problem is that most of those patient portals have very limited data. So that's why we actually go get the source records, because they tend to have a lot more richness in the data. But again, if that's not something that you really require, then that may be enough to keep you synced with those. Um, but I think the important thing isn't really which thing you use or how you go about it. It's that you do it. So... But I think that's kind of what I was getting at with education. 
information. People need to understand why they need to do this now and not necessarily when they're sick. So, for example, my mom um, was diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer, and just because of CareSync and her daughter being there, she had all of her information, but she didn't have any health history at that point, really, that was that relevant. But she had all of her information going back for you know, 40 years or something in her care sink. And so the day she was diagnosed, she was able to say, here's this information. And then she went to the oncologist and they had uh, FedExed her record to the new oncologist in a different state. And she got there and they couldn't find the FedEx of all the information. So they were going to have to cancel her appointment, send her back to Tennessee. And, um, but she had it all in care sink. So she just handed them her iPad and say, here all is. And so, you know, I think, if she hadn't had all of that information ahead of time, it's not, you know, you really have to do it when you're not sick. And I think that's the education barrier that we need to get people through. People seem to get it once they, but by then, in some ways, it's a little too late. Well, uh, I uh, I know from uh, activity in society that the your your wearing on your neck has a significant, you a little bit about that. <laughs> I forgot I had it on. Um, yes, I received an award from the White House in July for being a champion of change in precision medicine. So, yes, I like my lanyard. I wear it every day proudly. Absolutely. Yeah, the recognize. And you mentioned that with precision medicine, uh, we'll kind of wrap up here. We're, uh, we're running low on time. But uh, tell me about CareSync's uh component or how does uh, CareSync look at precision medicine or personalized medicine depending on uh, uh, what term you want to use? Right, so precision medicine is really all about putting the decisions and the care all about the person. So if you're going to get treatment for cancer then you should be able to get the works for your genetics and your makeup and your everything, your personal preferences, whatever. Um, And so CareSync obviously helps by Um, driving things around the patient, getting one source of data that is standardized data that can be shared. So as you get genetic testing data, it also can be part of your CareSync profile and can go into that whole initiative. Um, So, you know, we definitely are a big believer in that. Uh, Amy, any part of your experience that you can share with us that we haven't covered from you with the society? Um, Um. I'm a really proud member, and I'm proud of all the work that has been done so far. I've met so many great people in the society, and I refer people to it all the time. So even though I have a lot of lofty goals for what we should do, I'm proud of what we've also done already. Absolutely, and uh, and I I know you've uh, been a, a staunch and an awesome member, and I greatly appreciate all your support, and I look forward to uh, doing well and doing good. Through- Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Amy, I know you gave your email address in the other uh, shorter interview, but uh, for those that uh, might want it, uh, what is your email address? Sure, it's sure. Amy, Gleason, G-L-E-A-S-O-N, at caresync, C-A-R-E-S-Y-N-C, dot com. And my Twitter is at the patient's side. Excellent. Amy Gleason, thank you so much for joining. This is uh, John Hoban with the Society for Participatory Medicine. And we'll see you on our next installment. Thank you. Bye.